here in this lecture we will see or discuss what are the major methods that we can adopt to improve the commutation in dc generators <clears throat> already we discussed about the commutation in dc generators in the previous video we know that commutation is nothing but the reversal of current in the commutator during the short circuit period or during the commutation period so the reversal of if the reversal of current is not completed during the reverse during the short circuit period then we can say that our commutation is not good or not linear that will be a delayed commutation so in order to make good commutation we can prefer some methods so here we will discuss about that methods here you can see in this block diagram here we will discuss about the method of improving commutation for that we can refer three methods in this lecture we will see what are the methods that we can adopt to improve the commutation in dc generators already we discussed about commutation in our previous video commutation is nothing but the reversal of current in the commutator during the commutation period or during the short circuit period okay that is commutation if the commutation is not completed during the commutation period or short circuit period then we can say that that is a poor commutation or the commutation is not linear at that time so we can make the commutation better or the for the improved commutation we can adopt three methods the commutation may be delayed due to the production of sparking at the brushes or due to the production of reactance voltage so we can reduce these results by preferring three methods so here we will see in this block diagram you can see the method of improving commutation for that we can adopt three methods the first method is resistance commutation the second method is voltage commutation and the third one is use of compensating windings voltage commutation or emf commutation can be done by two methods that is brush shift method or use of interpulse in this video we will discuss about the resistance commutation method in detail and the rest methods we can discuss in the coming videos okay so first we will see resistance commutation okay here you can see the commutation that is three brush uh, three coils you can see here first coil second coil and third coil and this will represents commutator commutator a and commutator b, b is marked here and this shaded portions will be brushes okay the moment or the rotation of commutator will be from this left to right this arrow indicates the rotation of commutator so the rotation of commutator is from left to right so the contact area of brushes to the commutator will be from right to left because the brush is the stationary part and the commutator is the moving part here so and we we can see the what is meant by the com resistance commutation so for that first we will so, uh, consider the current from the coil 3 directly enter to the brush by taking two parallel paths what are the parallel paths we can consider that if capital letter i be the current flowing from coil 3 to the brush so it will take two parallel paths 
that can be a shortest path the other path can be the longest path so the shortest path will start from this coil 3 to the commutator b and directly to the brush and the rest current will directly goes from the coil 3 to the coil 2 and that current can be small letter i okay so the total current from the coil 3 will take two paths to reach to the brushes one is the shortest path and other is the longest path and the shortest path from starts from here to the commutator b to the brush that is the shortest path and the longest path will be from and the commutator sorry from the coil 3 to the coil 2 and to the commutator segment a and finally to the brushes so these are the two paths that will prefer by the cur current in the coil 3 so if we are using copper brushes we know that for copper brushes the resistance of the copper brush will be very less when compared with other so during the commutation period more current from the coil 3 more current will flows through the through this shortest path we know that current is always always flowing through the shortest path so the current from this coil 3 will take this path to the brush so current capital i will be very large at this time if the current is flowing to the brush through this shortest path so we can say that that current will be capital i minus small i the rest current will directly flows through the second coil so major more current will directly enter to the brush through the commutator segment b since it is the shortest path and the resistance of this brush is very less so that current will be i minus i the other some other part of the current will flows through the second coil to the commutator segment a to the brush and we know that from the first coil current i will be directly reaches to the commutator segment b so we can say that at this this portion of the brush will collect i plus capital capital i plus small i this small i is the current from the coil 3 so i plus i will be collected from here i minus i will be collected from here so the resultant current will be 2i if we add this we will get 2i will be the current net current collected by the brush so due to this reason that means if capital i or more current is flowing through the segment b to the brush then sparking will be very high due to this high current they will get broken due to the rotation of the commutator segment they will moving towards the right so that current will be get broken and heavy sparking will occur at the commutator during that time if more current will flow through the commuted uh, through the second coil and finally to the segment commutator segment a then we can say that the sparking is very less so if more current is taking this path then sparking will be very high so if we are using this a high car high resistance carbon brushes instead of this low resistance copper brush then what will happen we know that the commutator is moving from left to right brush is the stationary part due to the high resistance of the carbon brush more current will directly 
flows through the second coil and some part of the current will take this shortest path due to the high resistance and we know that it is moving segment is moving from left to right so the contact area of the brush to the segment b will reduce due to the reduced area contact area of the brush to the segment b we know that resistance r is equal to rho l by a if the contact area of the brush with the commutator segment increases then what will happen the resistance will decrease but here the contact area of the brush to the segment b will decrease since it is moving towards the right and the brush will come in contact with the segment a means from right to left so the contact area of the segment brush segment b will reduce hence due to this reason the resistance will increase so the current from the coil 3 will completely we can say that completely or no not completely most portion of the current will directly take the longest path to attain to the brush so less current will flows through this shortest path to the brush so the sparking get reduced due to the use of high resistance carbon brushes and in this case we can say that the coil 2 is under short circuited or the commutation commutation process is taking place under the coil 2 coil 2 is under the short circuit period or commutation period so we can say that the current from the coil 3 will take more current will take this path longest path so current from a coil will have two paths to attain uh, to reach to the brush they will take two paths so these are the major this is meant by the resistance commutation and these are the major points regarding with it so now based on this we can discuss about the advantages and disadvantages of using carbon brushes instead of low resistance copper brushes first one is they will provide better commutation we know that they will provide a, a reduce sparking will get reduced due to the high resistance of the brushes so that better commutation will be occur at that case if you are using carbon brushes and the next point is they will provi provide self lubrication and polish the commutator segments during the rotation that is one speciality of the ca carbon brushes they can provide self lubrication so that wear and tear of the commutator segments may be may get reduced due to this lubrication and polishing the third one is lesser damage to the commutator segments when compared with the copper brushes you know that due to the reduced wear and tear the damage and the due to and uh, and also the due to the reduced sparking the chance of damage in the commutator segments may be very less so these are the major advantage of using carbon brushes in the disadvantages can be due to the high resistance of the commutator high resistance the commutator has to be made very larger okay due to the high resistance of the uh, high resistance of the carbon brushes so the commutator has to be made very large the second one is voltage drop at the brushes will be very high when compared with the resistance that can be almost 2 volt for carbon brushes the last one is because of low current density large brush holders are required so these are the major advantages and disadvantages for carb the uh, of carbon brushes but we must remember that if you are using this 
high resistance carbon brushes we cannot completely avoid the sparking in brushes but we can reduce the sparking in brushes so let us in the next video we will discuss about voltage commutation or emf commutation method how this method can use to improve our commutation in better so we will discuss about in the next video okay thank you